going to continue to learn the wonderfulness of the two-step protocol to help us overcome super strong emotions. Now, step two to remind you is where we're already down to a stable five and we're grounded there and there's no spikiness. And now what? We're gonna so provide- the second part of the two-step protocol has two main purposes. Purpose number one is to calm that body further. You want to get it down from that stable five, possibly, to a two or a one or even a zero. And then you'll be able to fall asleep and stop spinning about this thing in your head. Or then you'll feel really calm to be able to go back and deal with this person or situation. The other option is to clarify the mind. Because think about this. When you're triggered in rage or shame or panic, your mind is distorted. It's not clear. There are things being filtered out, things being taken in. You've got a leaky gut mind. <laughs> and if you're not clear, you won't have clarity. And if you don't have clarity, you won't have wisdom. And if you don't have wisdom and clear mind, you're probably going to end up with the same results as you had before. So that's what these techniques will be about. So you might need either to calm the body or to clarify the mind or both. So coming up, we're going to have six techniques. The first three, again, are going to be diaphragmatic breathing. They're going to be ocean tide breathing and movie mindfulness technique, followed by clarify the mind with first learning about story situation technique and distortions. And then when we're about usefulness and truthfulness and finally automatic patterns and alternatives to that automatic and a good game plan. All right, here we go. Super strong emotions. Overcoming. We're going to go over today the um, baby breathing, also known as abdominal or diaphragmatic breathing. This is the type of breathing that babies do. If you see a baby laying on its back and its little stomach goes. Now this is an important technique. This is a relaxation technique. In contrast to chest-based breathing, which you can see in other videos, which is a release technique. This is a relaxation technique. And on our scale of emotional difficulties, we're going to call this something you can use for a 5 out of 10 and under. And if you don't know what that means, you, we'll talk about that in another place. But basically, that means that I am, in general, stressed a 5 out of 10. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to place one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach like this. Okay, great. And you're going to make sure that chest does not breathe and that stomach fills up with air. This is a technique that you're going to do three to five minutes. You'll set a clock for two or three minutes and you're gonna breathe in a count of four. So you're gonna breathe in one, two, three, four, and out two, three, four, and in two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now, let's talk a little bit about it more before we go on. So, this technique is really important for calming down at night, for slowing the mind. It basically gets us out of the fight or flight mechanism. In this version of the technique, it doesn't matter what your mind is doing. In other words, you could watch TV and do this. You can listen to music and do this. You could even be driving in the car, although I don't advise it, and do this because you might get too relaxed and get yourself into an accident. So don't try that. But you can be in a park. You can be with a friend. You can be in class. And it's great because, hey, it's just breathing. And as long as you're paying attention to some degree, nobody will notice you're doing it. Now, obviously, if you're alone and doing something relaxing, it will be more effective. But what you're going to do, again, there are four characteristics. I learned this from Jerry Gore, MD, over at the Center for Holistic Medicine in Chicago. Shout out for him. Great doctor and great um, therapist. And he's been using this technique with success for more than 10 years with his clients. And many therapists and meditation teachers also use this technique as a pre-meditation or warm-up. So again, what you're going to do it has four characteristics. Characteristic one is the in count of three and the out count of three, or in count of four and out count of four. That's characteristic number one. 
Number two is it should be um, smooth without break. So unlike the triangle breathing technique or the breathing prep technique, which is in, hold, out. There's like a, a firm edge. Here it's a circle. So that's why it's sometimes called circular breathing. So it's in, two, it's in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, out. So one in count of four, two. It is um, circular without beginning, without pauses. Three, it's silent. So unlike Ujjayi breathing and yoga or martial arts breathing, there's no, it's just silent. You shouldn't hear the sound of your throat or your nose. So. And in general, we're going to use our nose unless you find that difficult for any particular reason. And then you're going to use your mouth, but nose. So we're going to use nose breathing, no pauses, count of four, and um, no noise. So let's try that now, and I'll lead you in a couple minutes of doing that. So get make yourself comfortable. Whatever you're doing, you can lay down, you can stand, you can sit on the couch. And what you're going to do is, again, for the beginning, you can put one hand on your chest just to make sure you're not breathing in here. And um, it might take you a few seconds to get used to this if it's not natural for you. Um, you're going to close your eyes if you can. If not, just look at the ground or don't, you know, or look at the TV or whatever you're doing. You're going to breathe in. Four and out. In, two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four. Remember to keep it smooth. Keep going by yourself. Very smooth and flowing. No jerks. No pauses, you're relaxing, you're letting go of anything, of your day. Nowhere to go and nowhere to be right now. Just breathing, two, three, four, out. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four. Continue on your own. And in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. So go ahead and continue on your own for as long as you would like. This concludes the recording for the um, circular breathing, also known as diaphragmatic breathing for the into. Well, hey, we're on to the next technique in this wonderful course I'm so excited about overcoming super strong emotions. And I'm Daniel Levy, your host and facilitator. So now we're moving on to ocean tide breathing. This is the second tool of three tools in the second step of the 
famous and infamous two-step protocol. In this half of these techniques, we're talking about grounding and calming the body. We just reviewed circular breathing, and now we're going on to ocean tide breathing. Following this, we'll do the mindfulness. So ocean tide breathing is a little bit different. Before, we talked about a silent stomach-based breathing. Now, this involves a visual component. And in this breathing technique, you are going to breathe in your stomach like a balloon and fill it up. Now, there's going to be noise. And basically, you're envisioning that as your breath is coming in, it's like the tide pulling out. You know, like the tide goes over the rocks and it, it pulls. And So that's the shape of it. So you're basically breathing into your stomach, and as you breathe in, imagine that air is like pulling that tide backwards all the way to it press with that little bit of tension. And when it's all the way done, it comes forwards. And then I think you get the idea. We'll practice in a minute. So to summarize, you basically breathe in your stomach, which will look a little bit like this. I know that's embarrassing. You know, luckily I don't care. But sorry to my wife and friends, whoever sees this and says, oh my God, I can't believe he showed his, his stomach like that. But oh well. So as you breathe in, you fill up that diaphragm and, you, and you're pulling back over those stones. And you're going to put that breath either through the mouth or the nose, a little bit in common with Ujjaya breathing. So you're going to breathe in. And you can play with it a little bit. There's a little flexibility in this tool. And you get longer and longer and slower and slower. So let's do it together for maybe 30 seconds, and then you can continue on your own another time. Ready? And you're going to breathe in through your nose or your mouth if your nose is clogged. It's going to be, let's do a three or four count. In. In. And continue in and out. And continue on your own now. In. And as you hear it come in, you can imagine seeing the water being pulled over those tiny pebbles with the sand, the glistening of the sun on the rocks, the sun on the, on the sea. And then it comes in, see that tide pushing forwards, pushing forwards, a little last push, and then it slides back in. And out. And in. And out over those rocks. So, I feel more relaxed. Do you? I hope so. So this is another alternative breathing technique, which in the four to six range of moderate emotions can be very helpful in further calming the body and grounding the body. Let's say it's late at night and you're having trouble stopping your mind from spinning. Doing this breathing with the visualization 
may help you unhook and just calm down and fall asleep, but it's not going to give you more clarity. We're going to talk about that in the second set of three techniques when we work on clarifying the mind and finding truth. It also could be useful if you're just feeling real agitated and activated and you just want to calm down. The more you visualize it, finding whatever images and sounds that resonate the most for you, the more effective it will be. And I recommend starting kind of shallow and getting longer and longer and longer and longer to whatever's comfortable. And unlike the circular breathing that really has no stops and no tension, a little bit of tension is helpful here, especially if you're in a five or six range because you're getting a little of that tension release. So it's So you have that little extra at both ends. And uh, you know, the idea of this course in general is that you, you have a set of techniques and you don't need to learn them all. You have a menu and you're going to, at the end of this, make your cue card, your deal differently card, and you're going to just choose the one or the two that really help you. All right. Stay tuned for Movie Mindfulness. Here it comes. Movie the movie mindfulness technique. You're going to imagine that your emotions are on a screen on in a movie theater. So basically you're going to sit back in your chair or lay down and imagine that all the difficulties that you are experiencing right now, the mood flows, the mind states, you're going to put them on a screen out in front of you. You're sitting kind of in the front row or the third row and you see all this on the screen and let your imagination flow. Your eyes could be open and you could be picturing it kind of out here, or your eyes could be closed. And as you're picturing it, you're like, wow, let it be color swirling or let it be a drama playing out. You want to make yourself into an observer. You feel your body pounding in your heart. You're feeling upset. You're feeling a lot of swirling of emotions. That's okay. Imagine that they're on the screen and that you're looking at them. And let your imagination take over and, and it's on the screen. And wow, like, whoa, that's intense. Look at that. Look at that red. Look at that. Look at that fight happening between those two guys, like, whatever it is. And now once you, you kind of do that for a little while, you allow yourself to move to the seventh row. You're watching it on the screen, getting distance, observing witnessing, disengaging. Wow, man, I'm angry. Wow. Whew. Look at that smoke coming out of that, that raccoon's head or <laughs> whatever you're picturing. And you're going to move from the seventh row to the 10th row to the 15th row. And that movie screen is going to get a little smaller and a little more distant You know, like finally in the back of the theater. And the movie screen is smaller, sort of like a computer screen now. And it's way down there. Just watching like, wow, I can't believe how upset I am. I and mean, why am I so upset? Wow, I'm so afraid and there's nothing to be afraid of. Look at that. Wow. Whew. You watch it and watch it. You start in the front of the theater. You move yourself back. And you watch your emotions and your feelings and your thoughts on the screen. And that's it. It's kind of relaxing and sometimes it's even pleasurable and entertaining. For sure you can use this technique between a four and a six. It can be very hard to do it that I'm starting to yawn and, and get tired. And that's an important sidebar. When you get unhooked from the fight or flight method, method, fight or flight response, um, when your body's in that nervous system of tension and fear and cortisol dumping, it's exhausting. But you're also jacked up and stimulated. So when you unhook and unwind, one of the things that can happen is, like I am right now, and I'm unwinding even more, is you'll start to yawn. And why am I yawning? <sighs> it's because all that stress and tension is gone and that exhaustion and tiredness will start to take over because the body wants to recover. If that's happening to you, that's normal, and go with it. And if you're capable of doing it because you're at home or you're on a break, on a leave from work, take a rest. 
lay down, listen to some music, and just chill out for a while. Give yourself a break. Don't put pressure on yourself to go through something else. Wonderful. That's a movie mindfulness technique.